Breast on a reptile. That started this entire theory. No joke. Q intro. Oh yeah. Why can't Nido Queen breed? A question on all poker fans' minds. I'm here to try and answer this mystery. Let's begin by taking a look at the Nido family itself. Cause observation is key. Key, key wow. Wow. Just on observation, this evolution line is the result of erratic, probably painful forced evolution due to radiation. And Nido Ran is not the original form. It's Radata. Why Radata? Because to my research, hamsters don't live in caves. And there's no hamster Pokemon besides probably Nido Ran itself. It just works out for this theory. Now, let's try and figure the sources of radiation. I know what you're thinking, humans. And with all the wars that's going on, you might be right. But wrong! We're going to explore natural sources of radiation. That's right, natural. It's called radon. Radon is results of when elements like uranium, thorium, and radium break down into radon, which is absorbed throughout the entire environment. In the building materials we use, and even the air we breathe. For us, it's not that dangerous, but in the world of Pokemon, where evolution stones could cause drastic form metamorphosis in an instant is dangerous. And they're normally found in caves. Kind of brings in the question of how ethical evolution stones really are. Doesn't it? Now on the subject of caves, rats love living in burrows. But did you know some rats live in caves? They're called troglophiles. Lo and behold, there are caves close to where Nido Ran and Nido Arena lives. So let's quickly run down. Kanto, Route 22, next to Victory Road. Johto, Route 36, near Ruins of the Owl. Sinnoh, Route 201, with the mysterious Lake Viridity and its caverns. In Unova, they're in the already mysterious White Forest. And lastly, Carlos, we have Route 11, next to the odd reflective caves. Now, why are the Nidoran not in the caves themselves? Human activity. I mean, they are perfectly carved steps in the caves. Now for first evidence of radiation in the Nido family, they're rodents turning into lizards. There we go, end of theory, go home people. Nah, no, just kidding, we're gonna go into detail on this. Further evidence is in the environment, for I don't see any reason why Nido King and Nido Queen should exist in these environments, except for the Safari Zone, to compete with heavy hitters like Kangaskhan, Rhyhorn, Pinsir, and the Scyther Ninja. And with that, let's move on to the lightning round and examine the Nido family themselves. Everything starts with Rattata. After absorbing enough radiation, Radata begins to bloat, their tails fall off, and they begin to gain spikes on their body. After some time of living with this first affliction of radiation, the next change begins. We're going to start with investigating Nido Reno. His spikes tripled in size. The horn on his head is larger. Gone are those cute little rodent teeth replaced with sharp fangs. Now the most interesting part of Nido Reno's change is its spine and pelvis structure. This pelvis structure resembles an ornithischia, a type of dinosaur that have its legs tucked underneath it, like a triceratops, or what it resembles, a stegosaurus with its tail chopped off. Meanwhile, Nidorina loses her head horn completely. Her spikes divide equally to the edges of her back, and she has a pad-like tail. Her pelvis structure seems to be that of a Sorischia pelvis dinosaur, like a raptor. Ah, here lies the problem. Unlike Nidorino, 
It's apparent Nidorina is resisting the regression. Her structure is still quite rodent-like. This resistance is what causes the first signs of unstable DNA and infertility. Nidorina is like, whatever, I'm stronger, dude. But Nidorina is still trying to hold on to her mammal side. Now this might seem far-fetched, but I don't think I have to explain that Pokemon are way smarter than your average animal by a long shot. And if we're looking at Team Rocket's Meowth, just a few degrees under human intelligence. Now why is she resisting? Have you seen any scaly creature that takes care of their young? Any. Okay, there is one. The rare exception of alligators and crocodiles. And if Pokemon like Ash's Bulbasaur and Don's Piplup could resist evolution mid-go, and Pokemon resisting the radiation, like Pikachu and this Clefairy here, not hard to say that Pokemon might be able to actually, by willpower alone, influence their evolution. Such is the case with the next evolution. Keeping with the theme, let's examine Nido King. He only seems to evolve to compensate for Nina Arena's bipedal nature. As for everything else about him, it's focused on complete offense. The king's nose is gone. It's just a little stump. The horn is most of his face. There are deposits of what seem like dead scales or reinforced scales lining his elbows. His arms are widespread, along with his legs. He has a long tail and a forward shifted spine. Lastly, both Nidos have a vertical spade pelvis structure, meaning that they evolved pelvises similar to that of a iguana, where they have to shift their weight back and forward to walk. A really good example of this is if you own Super Smash Bros., walk with Charizard. And you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. But sadly, Nido Queen could not fix her DNA. The final results of Nidoqueen is a mixed bag. She has most of Nidoqueen's features, but a shorter horn and tail, a straighter spine, and breast. Are those breast? This one last try is a mixed bag because her last evolution she tried to base on humans. Seeing how humans could safely carry their young in their arms from place to place, or while running from enemies, she wanted this security for her possible future offspring. While trying to maintain her mammalian traits for her offspring, she ensured that she could not have any. Nido King, meanwhile, can breed. The male fully embraced the change without looking back. But in all this, there is a silver lining. While Nido Queen can have children, it seems she helped raise lost and abandoned young Pokemon. In our world, animals are always being lost, abandoned, or sometimes straight out rejected by the mother. And in the chaotic world that is Pokemon, you couldn't ask for a better foster mother than Nido Queen. It seems that these are the young that the Pokedex are always referencing. What are your thoughts on the situation? Is this what goes down? Or does Arceus play dice? Ponder well and ponder swift as you are now leaving the Theory Zone. Thanks for watching.